Nice to see you again. Thank you for dropping right on into another, <clears throat> I like to call it the class sessions with Micah. We're rocking out on Blender today. We're going to be doing some, I saw this effect in like this one of these YouTube videos, I'll credit it. But I wanted to figure out how to do it. Essentially what it is, is you have some objects in the middle, then you have essentially a rectangle around, and that rectangle is strobing uncontrollably and randomized. And we're going to be playing around with some geometry nodes today, which is different than what we used to. So we're going to be diving into some light geometry node work, and I hope that you can follow along. And if not, I'll be sure to chapter out everything. So if you get lost, feel free to just go on back, rewind the tape, and you'll be all good. So without ado, let's jump right on in. So first things first, per use, let's just go ahead and delete everything. Turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections. Then let's run over to the edit tab, open up preferences within the preferences under animation. Make sure under F curves, default interpolation is set to linear and not bezier. Once you do that, we're all good to go in our default settings and we're ready to get running. So great job there. Now the next step that we need to do is we need to import um, a plant. I'm going to use a plant because plants are cool and we can have this real cool like greenhouse effect um, within our thing. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and link it below. It's going to it's in model from Sketchfab. I'm going to show you how to quickly download it. Essentially, what we're not going to do is those two. <clears throat> this is called plants. I'm going to link it and then you're going to click download model. And from there, you're going to click download original format FBX. Try not to get lost. Now, once we have that model, we're going to go ahead and click on our file and import FBX. And you're going to go to where you downloaded that and you're going to have to extract some stuff. So you're going to have to use WinZip if you're on a Windows, if you're on a Mac, you should have that built in. Okay, my friend. Now, after you imported the models, you're going to be like, oh my God, there's so much going on here. There's three plants. What do I do? What do I do? What we're going to do is we're going to delete the three, the other two that don't matter to us. And just like that, we deleted them. And what I like to do with this model, because this model is kind of hefty, right? This model is one of those models that, um, in my opinion, maybe have a little too much for what we need. So we're just going to go ahead and just start deleting. You don't want to delete everything, but we're just going to do that. So when it comes down to animating this, you don't want to you don't want it to be like too crazy. You don't want your computer to be on fire. You just want it to be chilling. You want it to be nice and light. No one likes to work with a piece of work that is just like too intense. So I like to look at it from the top. Just go ahead and we're picking, we're just cutting off some branches. You know, sometimes when you're gardening, you just gotta cut off some branches. And that's what we're doing today. Just digitally in the metaverse, as some would say. All right, I think this is cool for now. Um, <clears throat> so once you pick off as many leaves as you want, don't worry, we can always rewind and go back and fix that just in case your animation might be too hectic. Press A, select everything. Press M. So create a collection, create this collection. I'm going to call it plant. Okay. Once you have your plant, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and just like pull it really far up away from what we're going to be working with because we don't want it to be in the way. Now go ahead and spawn in a mesh plane. Um, let's first things first, let's bring in a camera actually, because the camera bring it up a little bit right click down here do vertical split we just need to see what we're doing hold tilde camera just want to see what we're doing we don't need everything to be too big the bigger our workspace gets sometimes with blender stuff you start to have to compute more when you think about it on your computer so if you keep things light and small you'll be chilling so press s and x and we're just going to go ahead and just kind of like make this about the size of our camera. We need to leave a little bit of room to S and Y. What's gonna happen here is we're gonna have our plants just kind of living in this plane. So I'm gonna call this plain plant garden. I think I just, I just called it planting garden, but that's fine. Okay, but now we're gonna open up the geometry nodes. I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into the geometry nodes tab just so you don't have to worry about not seeing what I'm doing. So you're going to go ahead and click new. 
So real quick, if you're not seeing the geometry nodes tab, you're gonna have to go ahead and head over to the Blender site and just quickly update your Blender program. So the way you do that is just pretty much download a whole new Blender. And then once after that, it's gonna be like, do you wanna transfer these files or startup files? And once that happens, you're all good to go. So what we're gonna do to get us started with the geometry nodes, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Select our plane. You're gonna bring in two things, distribute points on faces and instance on points. Let's bring in those two. Let's bring in also a join geometry. And then we're gonna bring in last object info. This is, this is our bread and butter here that we're gonna play around with. So let's just pull this out. Let's go ahead and connect this. Let's see, we've got some stuff going on here. Connect this, connect this. And the object info is going to connect geometry to instance. Okay. Now you're like, everything is gone. What's going on, Micah? <clears throat> Actually, it's not object info. My fault. Collection info. Because we have a collection for our plan. Connect this to instance. What you're seeing pretty much here is also how you can spawn uh, objects or collections on a given ob a given object so our object is the plane and then we're gonna have a whole bunch of plants living here so you're gonna go ahead and click plant and you'll see we got a lot of plants going on here and things are looking kind of interesting let's take a look here so they're all pointed up vertical it did look kind of funky for some reason but I think we're still chilling so you see all these plants and you're like okay Mike you're like Let's make them a little bit smaller. You can go ahead and play with the scale. So I like to make them a little bit smaller. And let's go ahead and up the density quite a bit. And one thing that <clears throat> I like to do with this animation now is once you see that, we have our geometry nodes kind of set up real quick. So anyone needs to see a little quick snapshot of the nodes set up here. We have our group input distribute points on faces, which connects to the instant point. You wanna plug in that collection here. This is important. And from there, it collects the join geometry. We actually might not need that. You can, the reason we bring that in sometimes is if you wanna have your original shape showing, you would just connect these two, but we're not, we don't actually don't need that. Okay. So let's go back to our layout here. And we're gonna start bringing in some things here. So, Let's go ahead and <clears throat> bring in our little laser kind of thing. That's what I'm gonna call it. So you're gonna bring in a plane, I'm gonna call it neon lights. And with the neon lights, you're gonna go ahead and just kind of, you wanna give it like, a, you want it to outline essentially your plants. You don't want it to be out of it, but you want it to be in it. And once you have a plane, go ahead and select the wireframe you can kind of see now we have something going on here now let's go ahead and just horizontal split um, with your camera what I like to do so I can only see what I need to see up the passive palette you just want to see what you need to see my friend you don't want to get if you see everything sometimes like it'll just distract you from the goal that's a life lesson okay now, create a new material on the neon light. I like to call it neon. Good job, good job. Let's go ahead and just switch this over to an emissions. Let's just go ahead and switch rendered here so we can kind of see what's going on. I'll make it green, up the strength a little bit. Let's see, we have something. <clears throat> what, to make it, Okay, now let's make it flicker. That's probably the thing I should do instead of just making it green. So do that, do color ramp, <clears throat> switch to constant. One will be black and the other is essentially gonna be green, right? So once we have the two of them set up, bring in a noise texture. Here's where it gets interesting here. 4D, connect the factor. Let's go ahead and bring in a random 
admin an object info and then we're going to connect our random to our vector <clears throat> and then as you let's bring these two close again and you can see now it's kind of just strobing so if you want to let's make it strobe so now insert keyframe and then what you can do here is simply play around with the W. So essentially the more you would make, <coughs> as you increase this number, <coughs> what will happen is it'll flicker more and more. So this is just going from zero to six. You see it's kind of like meh. But if I were to make this from zero to 20, I believe, you'll get this like crazy flicker. And I think that's cool for now. So to recap what we did to make it glow, connect our material to emission node to color ramp is your color of your choice. Go noise texture and object info. Shout out to Ducky 3D for that technique. Now what we're going to do, <clears throat> it's kind of dark still, right? So what I did before was I simply just brought in a, um, an area light. Okay. Bring an area light, bring it up a little bit. I made mine a tint of green. And then you could just give it a little bit. Let's also make sure that our world lights are set to zero. Let's go ahead and also it's kind of dark back there. So I also duplicated my planet garden. Just put one right kind of behind it. As you'll see. And the one thing we want to do here now, as you see, it's like flickering, blah, blah, blah which is cool. Let's go ahead and just bring down that wireframe thickness a little bit. I think it's a little too crazy for me. Oops. Hmm, looks like we're stuck with that. Okay, let's well, flickering now. We got our light. We don't want it to be too crazy. Now what you could do to give the little cherry on top here is let's go ahead and take our planet garden. Let's pause it. Let's pause background garden. Let's take our planet garden and neon light. Let's connect the two. Let's go ahead and control P to parent it. And what I did to give it a nice little subtle animation is I just rotated it from one side to the next side. So it's a, oops. Just go ahead and what we can do is we can go ahead and just start this off at like uh, maybe a five into a single keyframe. Let's go about halfway. Set it to five. Insert single keyframe. Going back to the last one, negative five, just so it loops. And what you'll see here now is. We have this nice kind of plant. We have this these ferns kind of going on here. We've got some light. That's that. If you wanted to make it like really flicker, you could keyframe the lights kind of going on and off. But personally, I don't want too much of that going on. I don't want to just blind folks here on the YouTube tutorial, but that's your choice. Now I set mine to 60. And what I'm gonna do to just give it a little bit more love. Let's head over to the composition nodes and I'm gonna give it a bit of lens distortion. So the viewer node, reroute, a little bit of that, a little spice on top, nothing too crazy, nothing too crazy. Let's go ahead and just put this where we want it to go. Thank you. 
plants. Just render a quick still image. Oh, that's too much. That is too much. Render an image real quick again. We may not be getting the flicker. I'm saying it's just because it's not on the video. I don't have a catch. I think this is okay. So I'm going to quickly just render out the video and then we'll talk about it. So congratulate yourself. You did a really good job today. Uh, if this was successfully done, essentially you'd come away and walk away with we discover how to make light strobe through an emission node and then a little bit of knowledge on like uh, creating a grid of objects within geometry nodes on like a plane and feel free to swap this with any sort of object you know I think the importance is you want to have some level of contrast that's why we brought the light in so it's not just pitch black but you want a little bit so the strobe kind of still has that punching feeling but other than that Thank you once again for dropping on by and uh, attending class today or this workshop. Hope to see you in the next one and feel free if there's any sort of ideas or um, things you want to see broken down in Blender. I can give it the best I can, but I'm still learning the program. But honestly, this is practice for me and hopefully this is practice for you. So thank you once again and I'll see you around.